What's up everyone? So check it out. These were caught a couple of days ago. They're not fresh the way I would like them to be, but we had dinner plans so we didn't cook them. Uh, I just put them with some wet paper towels to keep them moist but not saturated inside the water. Uh, the texture of the fish, I don't really like it whenever it sits in a bowl of water or in this case a pan of water. But uh, we're gonna do redfish on the half shell uh, since the fajita seasoning one is a family hit. Uh, we'll do two of these, or actually just one fish, uh, both fillets with the fajita seasoning. And then we're gonna try something a little bit different. It's still gonna be on the half shell in the same way that I cooked the fajita seasoning one, like my last video, except we are going to make one that's like a Cajun seasoning. So we'll see what that's gonna turn out like. And we also have I've got right down here all the trout fillets that uh, from those two monstrous trout that we got over there at Maddie. So we're gonna cook all this up. Uh, these are gonna be cooked with a like a, a breading uh, parmesan with basil uh, panko. So that should be really good as well. Let me finish doing some of the prep. It shouldn't take long and uh, we'll get these in the fryer, we'll get these in the grill, and uh, just see what Elijah's gonna think about them. I'm gonna start things off with the redfish. Uh, since that's gonna take the longest to cook, it's gonna be in the grill for approximately 35 minutes. Just gonna make, score it with little cross hatches, little slits, We'll get that seasoning all the way in it and then go the opposite way, just like that. This is gonna allow us to do is get the seasoning all deep down inside that meat. So every bite that is taken is definitely gonna have a lot of flavor. So that's one of the fish right there. So we've got some Tony's and then we've got some lemon pepper. Start off by just giving it a light dusting with the lemon pepper. All right. And then this stuff is pretty spicy, so we'll give it a generous dusting with that. This is like super easy to make. I mean, I cannot get over on how good it tastes and uh, how quick it is to actually make it. Now, that's pretty much it right there. <laughs> uh, there's no need to go any further than that. Boy, this is working its way up in my nose, all the cayenne that's inside uh, that Tony's. Woo, gonna make me sneeze. All right, so what we're gonna do next is take some butter. We'll cut four tablespoons right there into, like each tablespoon is gonna be one pad. So, here we go. We'll get all these pads of butter and just layer it on top of our fillets. When it cooks over the grill, this butter melts off onto the charcoal and uh, gives it a really great smoke flavor. Not that the charcoal doesn't do that already, but uh, this gets lit up on fire. I don't know, it's just like magic that happens inside that grill. So uh, the butter seeps into all of these little cuts that we have in the filet, which I already forgot to do one step. Um, gotta rub all of this seasoning in between all of this right here, this meat, all these little cubes. And these are all like bite-sized too, so it's just like perfect when you're picking at it with the fork. Gosh, it's so good. I don't think the, the family is ever gonna get tired of redfish on the half shell because I said it is a definite winner inside this house. Uh, to all of you that recommended doing the redfish like this, I really appreciate it because you cannot go wrong doing fish like this. I mean, it is, it is that good. If you haven't tried it before, you definitely need to try it. We're gonna finish it off with sweet onion. And do some onion rings basically that you place on top. So for those that like the onion flavor, these things are, they don't get caramelized, but they are grilled onions and they taste really well too with the, uh, the fish. Helps to complement it. 
and it makes the neighbor's mouths like water because uh, of that old trick. Whenever you're grilling, you just throw the onions on the grill and then the whole neighborhood smells it, especially on a windy day like today. <laughs> Setting those guys up. All right, take this outer piece of onion off because it is very chewy. This right here is for one fish. Here we go. Man, I cut too deep on that bad boy. So we got onion slices, basically. Here we are, just gonna load this bad boy up. Let's load up the other filet, and then that's gonna be good for the Cajun seasoning. A side of squeezing some fresh lemon juice whenever it comes out of the grill. That's pretty much it. It's, it's that simple. The longest part of about this uh, food prep is actually filleting your redfish and trying to keep from wasting any of the meat. So you get that fillet knife closest to the backbone, uh, which reminds me, for those of you out there that have an awesome fillet knife, I'm looking for recommendations on uh, what I should buy. These knives right here, really good German steel and uh, they hold an edge you know for a long time however my fillet knife it's that cheap old little academy special the Rapala uh, with the wooden handle and I constantly got to sharpen that I sharpen my knives before I do any type of cooking anyways but uh, the Rapala knife it does not just cut through that redfish like butter so uh, maybe I, I have it all wrong and those, you know, even the best of knives aren't going to cut through those redfish's uh, rib bones. But if I'm missing out on something and a knife definitely does go through that without any issue, it goes through the scales without any issue, please let me know in the comments below uh, what type of knife. Uh, you don't got to try to sell me. I just want to know. Just ideas. I want a good quality fillet knife, something that's going to last a lifetime. So, yeah. All right. This is done. We're gonna set this aside and then we will start prepping the other one, which is right here. For the trout fish sticks, we're gonna take and make our batter, not batter, the breading. Uh, you simply just use some panko, use a whole box, uh, a whole bag, box, whatever. And then we're gonna take fresh basil. So we're just gonna get this really nice and fine just take all your basil bam right inside the breading next we are going to take and parmigiano reggiano uh, you can use parmesan I don't recommend it uh, it doesn't have the same taste and flavor that parmigiano reggiano has you want about a cup that's as close as I'm going to be able to get it. That's darn close to a cup's worth of Parmigiano. Add a little bit of Himalayan sea salt straight from the Yeti's backyard. Next, we'll just mix it in. I think the uh, speckled trout is going to be a good candidate for this style of fish because it has that texture of as if it, the meat was minced, but we know it's like solid filet. We're just gonna cut it down to size. Next, we're gonna lightly beat two eggs. That's gonna be the wash that will help us to uh, get the breading to stick to the fish fillets. Here we go. You don't wanna overdo it as far as uh, beating it. Here we go. Just wanna get the yolk mixed in with the egg white. That's all we're really going for. Okay, that's good enough right there. Next, we will just get another cutting board. Move this to the side. Let's get our trout and cut them into really nice size fish sticks. So that should be good for one right there. That's fine. There's another two. The reason why I'm doing this uh, so small is that they cook like instantly. I'm going to put the fryer on 400 degrees and it's like literally less than a minute. 
Uh, if you get to a minute, then you're golden for sure as far as uh, knowing if it's completely and thoroughly cooked. Get about a cup of flour. I don't really need a whole cup, but somewhere around about like a cup just to lightly coat our fish sticks. We're gonna take the trout and dredge it into the flour. That's gonna dry the filet up or the fish stick up. And uh, when you put it in the egg wash, the egg is actually gonna be able to stick to it a lot better rather than just going straight uh, from this step into there. It's not gonna stick very well. So you'll dredge it into the egg, into our breading, and then onto the tray. This is the tedious part right here. This is where you get dirty. Make sure it gets coated. All right, so that's good enough right there. There's one. But what I did was take the breading, cover it, and then press down really hard on it. It sounds crazy. I know you're taught to, to never like flatten, press on a steak, press on a fish or anything like that. But in this case, we want that breading uh, to stick to our fish and that Parmesan that's on there, oh my gosh, that's, now that's where it's at because that stuff, as it gets heated up and it starts to melt, uh, I, something about it, it just makes it taste magical. All the fish have been breaded. What we're gonna do now is start prepping our side dishes. We're gonna take some boudin and uh, we'll use the remainder of this breading to do some fried boudin balls and uh, we'll get this right here, some asparagus prepped up for the grill and uh, do some grilled asparagus. All right, here, let me see that. We're gonna take some olive oil and get it on our asparagus. Do this so that the garlic and the onion can stick to it. Lightly season it with a little bit of garlic. And we'll throw some onion. Let that grill for about three minutes. And then we'll flip it. Go ahead and start adding our fish. These don't take long at all to cook. I mean, they will be done like within less than a minute's time. So take a look at that nice golden brown crust. Definitely got a really good breading over that fish. That's what I love about the panko. All right, there's all of our boudin balls and we're just gonna let those cook up. Well, if you didn't know any better, you'd swear these were hush puppies. All right, another five minutes on these and we should be good. Go look at that. Let's get inside so you can really see it. That is golden brown perfection right there. Oh wow, that is super good. Try the try the Creole one. I did. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Think it's too hot? Mm -hmm. Just enough spice? <clears throat> We're gonna get another opinion. We're gonna bring my wife in. Okay, so Shannon does not like fish. Let's rephrase that. She doesn't like fish that is purchased from a restaurant or a store. If I catch the fish, it took a long time for her to finally eat the fish that I have been preparing. <laughs> and hey, hush girl. Uh, so if, if this tastes good, then she's gonna definitely let me know. But uh, go ahead, you've got fajita redfish on the half shell, which you've already had and you like. This one's the Creole right there. And then underneath all of these trout sticks, fish sticks, uh, is another Creole one. And then you got fried boudin, which I know you don't like, grilled asparagus. And uh, we forgot to put some of this. You want some lemon on it? Yeah, but I'll try Creole because I haven't tried that before. There you go. Have you tasted a boudin bowl? Oh yeah. Careful, it's hot. Mmm. That is delicious. The Creole is really good. The Creole? It's, it's much spicier than the... The fajita? That's because the fajita doesn't have anything on it. Oh, okay. It's very good though. It doesn't taste fishy. Tell though. you, <laughs> this stuff is like awesome. It's probably not the healthiest. It's like a smidge underneath kale, but uh, it is freaking way 
more delicious than what kale tastes like. Mm. Asparagus is on point. My gosh. Y'all definitely have to try this uh, breading for the fish. The trout, 10 times better than your bag of, what is it called, Gordon's? Something like that. The fish sticks that they have on uh, in the grocery store, that yellow bag, got nothing on this. That crunch, the basil and parmigiano reggiano, gosh darn, all of this is delicious. I tell you what, it is phenomenal. It's gonna be really hard for me to like change it up, go from the redfish on the half shell and cook it another way because I love, I absolutely love the way this taste. These two right here, about the only other thing that I would probably do is, what do y'all think about the, the Creole butter? You know what we inject our turkeys with? Think that'll work? Maybe. I think it will. All right, so that's all I have for y'all. Uh, I do thank you again, as I always do, for watching my videos. Uh, I really appreciate that love and support that y'all show. Any comments, y'all know what to do. Leave those down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. And we are going to try our best to put a dent in this tray. But, I mean, look at that. What do you think you would pay for something like this at a restaurant? That's probably going to be top dollar right here. That's a ton of food. And that's only four fish. So I don't think I need to keep anything more than four for my family. Because it's definitely more than enough food for us. Are so, different? Yeah, these are the trout. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I have. Thank you for watching, and until next time, tight lines, everyone. This is delicious. Yeah, the top.